Hi guys, welcome to Step by Step Data Science Tutorial. So today we are in part 16, Anomaly Detection, and we will write all machine learning equations using Andrew Nyan Corsica data set, and we'll visualize. And also we will discuss about normal distribution, multivariate Gaussian distribution, and we'll visualize all this data from scratch in Jupyter Notebook. So let's start. What is anomaly detection? So anomaly detection is better explained so an example, let's say if I need to detect a failing servers in our network, I have two feature here, latency and throughput. So X1 denotes latency and X2 denotes throughput. So this is my given training data set. And now if I have a new data set where, which, in which I need to make a prediction and my new, new data set somewhere lies between here, here. So this lies inside my training data set so here, this is a non-anomaly data set. So this is my okay. So here, my data new data set is fitting the module. So this looks this fitting this data looks good. So this is good. No anomaly, right? So however, if my test data in which I need to make a prediction lies somewhere here. Right, and so this is far beyond my training data set. So here, this data can be my anomaly. So this is this is my anomaly data, right? So he, likewise, if it's somewhere here or here, so these are all my anomalies, anomalies or outlier, we can say, outliers. So this can also be my outliers. Okay, so. These are, this is what the term anomaly means. So let's say, for example, I have used Andrew Nan data set. So I have X component and let's visualize this data, okay? So I will do plt dot scatter and X bracket all. So my, I will have my first column zero and, and then one zero and one column and I will denote uh, this as my marker. So my marker will be X. If I do this here, we can see here looking at this example, what we can say. Looking at this example, what we can say. Here my anomaly data is, is, so here we can say my anomaly data is this. So this is my, this point, this, these are all my anomalies, right? So, so these are all my anomalies, okay? So we can say we have one, two, three, four, five anomalies in my data. Now we, now we will discuss about our normal distribution. Okay, so why why we are discussing about normal distribution is so to determine anomalies we use a normal distribution which is also called Gaussian distribution. So by using this distribution we are able to find anomaly or outlier in my data set. So what is normal distribution? So normal distribution is my symmetric bell shaped distribution. What does symmetric means? A symmetric means my here mean equals median equals equals mode. So all these three are equal. In here at this point, at this point, your mean mean is equals to median equals to mode, right? So that's why this is called a symmetrical because my mean, median and mode all are equal. And bell saved, why it is called bell saved? Because it looks like a bell, right? Here, this, this curve is, is this curve, curve is, is what we call bell saved, bell saved curve, right? So here in this bell saved curve, I have mu, which always lies in this, in this middle point, And the variance is denoted by, by standard deviation, which is sigma. So here, this is my variance. So this is also no, also called a Gaussian distribution. 
and in which my in which this distribution is symmetrical, well set, and where mean, mode, and median all are equal, right? And it has two parameters, mu and standard deviation. It's also denoted by something like this. So it's noted by mu sigma square. So this follows a normal distribution. Let's say x. So it's denoted, it's denoted by like this, this symbol. This means distributes distributed as mean and, and standard deviation. So, so the equation equation for my normal equation is something like this. So one by sigma two hundred two pi e to the power minus zero point five times x minus mu whole square by sigma. So here, what does sigma represents? So this is my this is standard deviation. So this the variance that we see in my in normal distribution is sigma. So this sigma is the change of the value that we see. And this portion is the height. One by sigma two hundred two pi is my height. Okay. So normal distribution, in normal distribution, my data from here. So this is if we take a one deviation. So one deviation is it covers sixty eight percent of my data. Two deviation covers ninety five percent of my data. Three deviation covers ninety nine point seven percent of my data. So anywhere that lies outside of my outside of ninety seven percent, this is called outlier. Outlier or anomaly. Outlier. Any any data that lie outside of ninety nine percent range is my outlier or anomaly that we say. So we use a normal distribution so that we can see whether my whether the data is within the three standard deviation or not. And if the data is outside of this deviation range, then that is considered as outlier. So, so what would be then, what would be my algorithm for calculating the, for computing anomaly detection will be, so this would, this is my algorithm for computing anomaly detection. So first is to choose. So first one, first the uh, the anomaly detection algorithm has three steps. First one is to choose whether my xi that that we think may be indicative of anomalies example, and second one is to fit this equation. So we discussed about a normal distribution. So in normal distribution, so this mu mu is calculated on the basis of one by m sigma of xi, xi mu of j. And this variance, this, this deviation, sigma is calculated on basis of one by m root of xi j minus mu j whole square, which is this. So if we compute this value, then we get mean this point and my deviation, standard deviation. So these are the two, two things that we need to calculate when we apply anomaly detection. And then finally, this is my equation. This is uh, the this is equation. This is the module that gives me the this uh, bell shaped curve. So we need to implement this module. This is, this is my module to implement. And if we implement this module, then we will see whether my data is between this range or not, 97% range. And if, if it is something somewhere outside of this range, then that is my anomaly or that is my anomaly or outlier. 
right? Okay, so let's implement this. So let's first check. So this is on the basis of uh, plotting my both X and Y. Two feature, I have used two feature here. One is my, uh, my latency and second one is my throughput, okay. So here, plt dot my x level is latency, which is given in millisecond, and plt dot y level is throughput. This is given in any byte per second. So if we look at the individual plot, like individual plot means if you look at latency and throughput, then sns dot this plot bracket. So this is my latency. And if we look at throughput, throughput. So if we look at this two distribution, this two distribution looks uh, like a bell shaped curve, right? So my two, this two distribution, this two, this also looks like a bell shaped curve. This looks like a, it looks like a bell, bell shaped curve. And this also looks like a bell shaped curve. Where my mean, median, mode, all three are equal. Here also the same. But however, if we, if we, if we plot on, on by taking one coordinate as x axis and another as y axis, we see that there are anomalies in my data set. So the normal equation that we, we that I have mentioned for for normal distribution, this equation. So this equation works only when we have one variable. So one one feature. For example, if I if I only have latency, then I would use this feature, right? But here we have two feature, right? And after relating to feature, after finding correlation between these two feature, we were able to find out that these are my anomalies point, right? So here we cannot use my normal equation. So here what we need to use is, here we need to use a multivariate, multivariate normal equation, which is this. We need to use this equation. Why we need to use this equation? Because here we have two features and we, and we will not able to find the correlation between these two features and by, by using simple normal distribution, which have only one covariate. So we need to use two, co, two, variate, two variables, two features. So here I have two features. So by using two features, I was able to determine my anomalies. So if we need to use two features, we will be using multivariate Gaussian distribution. So this distribution we need to use to, so that we can find anomalies with this variable, with this data set. So if only if I only have one, one feature, then I would use normal equation, which is this, this equation. But however, if I have two variable and by looking at the correlation between them, I was able to see that we have anomalies in this data set. So here we need to use multivariate Gaussian distribution. Hope this makes sense. So now let's write the equation uh, for my mean and variance. So mean and variance, why I need to write equation to, to get a bell shaped curve, right? So that I can find my this point, this mu and the variance sigma. So I will write this equation to get mu and 
and variance okay so my diff of uh, estimate motion will be i'll take x and m will be my x dot shape mean will be 1 by m 1 by m times mp dot sum of x comma x is equals zero because we need to do a sum on based on horizontal wise so x is equals zero add zero on horizontal wise which is row row wise and if we do x equals one that will add my row column wise so i need we need to add our rows on horizontal wise row wise so we will do x equals j and my standard deviation will be equals to one by n times np dot sum of x minus mu of square and this will be again access because we need to add horizontal wise row wise divide by m okay now to return my mu and standard deviation so this will be in one bracket square and my axis will be equals to So one more bracket to okay. give. X minus. Okay, now this looks good. Now we have calculated mean and variance. Now let's uh, check mean and sigma. So this is working fine. So now we need to write equation for multivariate Gaussian distribution. Did not variate motion like an x comma mu comma sigma. So here my k will be my length of mu. So here sigma is my diagonal matrix. So I will take that uh, sigma as sigma sigma is my diagonal matrix. So m p dot diag bracket sigma and i need to do here x minus mu so for for i will do x minus mu here once x minus mu dot t so that my dimensions are equal now my p will be equals to one by np dot one by give a bracket two times np dot pi pi whole all square of k by two k by a two times so so this is my determinant so how to write determinant is through lin ALG algebra dot d e t determinant of sigma sigma is my diagonal matrix and then whole to the power of 0 0.5 
So this is my one multiplication and then this np dot then algebra dot that determinant of sigma times to the point five. Okay, now this will be into exp np dot xp again minus 0 0.5 times x minus mu is my x so at the rate so that i can do my matrix multiplication at the rate and p dot then algebra dot p inverse so this is my inverse p inverse of sigma sigma times x so x is my this one x minus mu which we have already calculated then we need to take mm, this sum and p dot sum of this where my axis is equals to zero one sorry And then I need to close this bracket. Okay. And we do. Let's check if this is working or not. P equals. Okay, this is working fine. So we have calculated our P and we have mu and we have sigma okay sigma now now let's uh, do a visualization and see our look uh, look how our data looks like so i will increase my figure size size will be eight by six let's take so i will i need to do a control plot here so that i can visualize my data so i will create first my mesh grid don't add it zero to 35 Point five, comma zero point five. Yeah. Let's see, if this is working. Yeah. And then I will apply the multivariate Gaussian equation that I have written. Mm, and we dot stack. Stack my x1 and x2 that will be here. If I'll comma x2 dot level my axis will be equals to one comma mu comma sigma. I need to close this here. Okay. So this also looks good. Now we wish save my my P2 with P2 dot save. One dot save. So this is working fine. Let's do a plot, PLT dot plot. Comma zero, this comma one, VX. It's colored by blue. Let's check if this is working. Okay. 
now let's apply a contour c one d o u r of x one comma x two comma p two and i will incre increase my level so my levels will be times ten to the power p dot lens bracket minus twenty comma one comma three and my z order will be equals to hundred levels will be Okay, so this is my final control plot. Here, what we can see is, is in this area, in the in the area highlighted in yellow, or gives gives the correct prediction. And my anomalies are this point, this point, this one, this point, this point, and this point. All all my anomalies, anomalies. Anomalies and so on. So, so this is how we we plot and see my anomaly data. In the next video, we will set a threshold so that we can know whether my data is anomaly or not based on my threshold value. Okay. So, in next video, we will look how to set a threshold so that we can see whether my feature is anomaly or not. So hope you like this video. Well, please subscribe my channel and encourage me to create more videos. Thank you so much.